So pleased to be joined today by the man who will be challenging Orange Cassidy for the AEW International Championship at Revolution in Greensboro, North Carolina, March 3rd. It's Roderick Strong. Roderick, thank you so much for joining me today on Under the Ring Pro Wrestling Conversations. How are you doing? Good, dude. How are you? Thanks for having me. I appreciate doing, it. Doing great. Uh, you've had a long decorated career, but uh, this match with Orange Cassidy is one of the higher profile matches, I'd, I'd say, of, of your career. Uh like him, you're someone who can get in the ring and have a good and different match with just about anybody. How do you think you two match up stylistically? Uh, fantastic. Exactly what you said. Just two people that can work with anybody. And that's something I actually like. really respect about him is the fact that he can work with absolutely anybody, adjust his style, make people adjust their style he's a very special wrestler but also a very special character in professional wrestling did you know of him before uh stepping in the ring with him and what was kind of your first impression when you first saw his persona because I, I feel like it's something when you see it the first time you're just like what is this and then you kind of sort of end up getting used to it yeah i i mean i knew of him prior to him being orange cassidy right so um and then once he became Orange Cassidy, yeah, it, it was one of those exactly that. Like, if he couldn't wrestle as well as he could and can, it, it probably would have turned me off. But the fact that he is so skilled, um, it makes it very impressive. Just how creative he is with it. And, uh, you know, it just being so different makes it so enjoyable to watch. And that championship, too, is so uh, elevated now. You know, a lot of the reason why is, is some of the work that he did both in the first run and now. And, you know, obviously you're in a big match with him one-on-one -on -one for that championship on a on a very big card where there's a lot of tickets sold for it, too. So yeah. it's got to it's mean something. Uh, you know, what, what would it mean for you to, to be able to be the international champion? Mm. Oh, it it's going to take me a second to be able to actually put it in words that you can understand. But I would just say for the time, the nine and a half months I was out. Um, and it's interesting. There's a lot of the guys of my era now that have dealt with some sort of injury, some, you know, pretty major and, you know, are going into this other, part of their career with a different perspective. And I think for me, it's the same. Like I have so much respect for what orange has done with the title and what the title means to professional wrestling. And that is what I feel like the blue collar title, the, you know, you know, the workhorse, the expectation is high. And that is, you know, something that I personally need to feel challenged, but you know, also just to, to try to live up to the legacy that's already been laid for the title and help it grow and, and become an even more important title in professional wrestling. So you're now a member of the Undisputed Kingdom after the reveal at World's End with Adam Cole and Wardlow and Matt Taven and Mike Bennett. Prior to all of that, we had this wheelchair, we had all these skits, we had a giraffe, we had your yelling of people's names. I think for some people that was probably a surprising look at Roderick Strong. So how much fun did you have with it? And were you able to have with it? I guess, where did the creative inspiration for a lot of that stuff, uh, where was it born? Oh, honestly, it was probably the most fun I've had in my entire career, just because it was so different. And it was a challenge. And but that's, you know, some of the stuff that I I really wanted to do when coming to AEW because there is freedom in that sense and the opportunity had created itself. And it was like week by week adjustments, like stuff that, you know, I would feel or somebody else would feel and they suggest it. And I was down for whatever. It didn't it didn't matter to me. And and that's one of the things like I was saying about being grateful and coming back and not sure at first if I was going to be able to to continue to wrestle is being able to do more stuff like that like and leave you know a lasting impression in that aspect of the the sport as well in the entertainment part so 
man, it it was awesome. The amount of conversations we would have and just, you know, being able to dive into to real life things and, you know, and try to recreate these feelings that I had or, you know, situations I had seen with people and how they, they are obsessive with somebody. I don't know. It was just, it was an awesome challenge and it was, it was one that I was, uh, you know, up for. And, and it's funny, I think having a kid really helped me open that part of myself even more because listen, the amount of things that I've done that I would have felt so embarrassed about in public. Now I do not care. As long as it makes him happy, I will do it. That's awesome. What you mentioned your son, what's it like having a husband and wife who are both active pro wrestlers? Well, he seems to love it. Like in that, and, and it's not something that we push on him, you know, but it, he loves what we do. He's always telling me he's going to be a professional wrestler when he, you know, turns 18. And, you know, that's one of those things where it's like, yeah, we'll see. But the fact that he's so passionate about it, like right now, he's uh, he's really into Daniel Garcia. Interesting. And loves the dance and just, you know, fully behind him. I have heard Daniel Garcia's entrance music probably <laughs> – over a thousand times in the last couple of months because we get, the, you know, we have different drives. We take him to school or we go to like his baseball practice or something. And we have a list of songs that he loves. And that's usually, we got to listen to that two or three times before we get to our location. So and he's just dancing. <laughs> and I don't know. It's awesome. You know, Daniel Garcia is like, you know, he's a, he's a young man with a ton of potential with a great head on his shoulder. So it's cool that my son like looks up to someone like that currently yeah you see him doing the little dancing like the on deck circle or something and uh <laughs> oh he can't wait his first game got postponed but this weekend will be his first actual baseball game and he's oh he's been ready to do it how old is he now he'll be uh he's six he'll be seven in april very very good congratulations yeah. on that yeah thank um, you we mentioned before about the Undisputed Kingdom and that stuff. How did you like the reveal of the devil at World's End and kind of the follow-up? I mean, I, I thought it was great. It, it was what it needed to be. And, you know, I was just happy for the moment when it all finally came together because, I, I don't know, just understanding that it was going to be, you know, we're going on to the next chapter of this and – to honestly be able to do it with those guys is is amazing. Like I I love those guys to death. It's been awesome just to, you know, see Matt and Mike get an opportunity and you know Wardlow as well and you know Adams the man. So I, I don't know. It's I think you know and it's something that's finding its footing. That's that's another thing, you know, in the sense of you know, pivoting when we need to pivot and just doing things, you know, like the camaraderie between us it has been fantastic and the communication and we're just, you know, everyone's stepping up when they need to. And yeah, it's been fantastic. I'll say too, as somebody who lives in the Northeast and attends a lot of wrestling shows, I've been watching Matt Taven and Mike Bennett since about 2000 and before they were at Ring of Honor. So, you know, it's 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 real great to see them uh, in the position that they're in now too. Um, of course, one of the big attractions on this show is the promoted last match of Sting tagging with Darby Allen against uh, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson, the the Young Bucks. Any thoughts on Sting's career as he winds it down, or any any uh, any personal stories of of any interactions you've had with him? Uh, every interaction I've had with him has been fantastic, you know, and he's had some great interactions with my wife and uh, he's just, he, he's awesome. And you know, I've said this a couple of times kind of recently to people and stuff, but I really feel like he has just set such a good example of how someone in his position should be. Like he is just cool. He's easy to conversate with. He will give you his time when he's out there. He works his butt off. Like the stuff that he does is incredible. And just like, I don't know. He's just, 
an absolute legend and just to be able to be on the same show as Sting and it just so happens to be his last match. Like, I don't know. It, it's just been awesome. Like I said, I haven't talked to him a ton, but I respect just the way he does his thing and, you know, lives his life. So it's going to be sad because, you know, obviously I wish he'd be around more so I could, you know, get a chance to know him better. But I mean, obviously he's been doing this forever and he deserves his time. So just grateful I get to be there for it. Yeah, I was gonna say I've been I've been watching you for a long time. I, I, I and, you know, you think about how long he's been in the game, and it's since like 1985. So it's like it's unbelievable. You're a veteran. You've been around for 20 plus years at least. I don't I don't know what what number you're at now, but yeah, 90, 95 is when I started around wrestling. So wow, it's like yeah. 29, 29 years. Yeah, the first time I saw you in person was the Do or Die card at the ROH at our best in Elizabeth, New Jersey. I looked this up yesterday. You wrestled uh, Hydro, which is of course Jay yeah on that card. That was uh, the Mark uh, the Jay Briscoe Samoa Joe cage match. Uh, oh yeah, and, and, and Mark Briscoe took that Styles Clash on the floor. Yep, from the oh man, I remember that that event. That, and that would have been, I think, lethal probably in his hometown too, uh, in Elizabeth. Yeah. So, well, it's cra- it's crazy that we would then go on to have such a series of matches and ending up having a feud and stuff. Like, who would have thought? Like it, thinking about it, you know, I, I hadn't thought about that in a minute, but it's super cool. Yeah, it was just I was digging it around at the beginning of your career, and I was like, oh, I was at that show twenty almost twenty years ago. Um, in, in Elizabeth, I know some of your personal history and some of the trouble you've had you had growing up is well documented. It's unique to me that the person listed as your trainer is Jimmy Anvil Neidhart. Uh, what was it like learning from him as a young man, and how connected did you kind of like stay with the family? It was intense. You know, obviously I was so young and I was intimidated, but um, that is one thing I can say is I'm a very good listener when I choose to be, and he gave a lot of information during those times and I was really able to, to pick it up, obviously not understand majority of it until later on in my career, but you know, I can't thank him enough for, you know, just the opportunity that got created. Like if it was not for his words that he said to my dad, be it probably just being kind of like, uh, if he sticks to this, I think he'll be good at it. Like, and that was the first time, you know, in a long time that I'd really heard anything like that. And as a kid, that just like it, I don't know. So if it wasn't for that, who knows what I'd be doing, but yeah, it, it, it was cool. And, you know, I know Natty and, you know, Harry, Harry was actually like my first real kind of match I ever had. It wasn't in front of people, but, so it's crazy to see like how his career has went and yeah, they, they were all cool and it's just wild that we're all still doing this and, you know, you know, and rest in peace to Jim, but uh, man, he changed my life forever. It's a fascinating wrestling tree too. When you consider the, like you were probably you know, what, 13 years old wrestling Harry Smith. And oh, I was 12. Yeah, 12. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. And he was 10. Yeah. Holy mackerel. I mean, and you think of all the history, you know, just in that family and then like all the different branches and you see what Natty and TJ are doing even now across kind of promotions and stuff too, with different people that they're helping out in, in the, in their own, uh, in their own way too. So. Yeah. And that, and that's something I, I absolutely love. TJ is an amazing person as well. You know, grateful, obviously meet him through the wrestling business, but just to know them and the attachment and, and everything he he's a he's one that i never got to work with that i really you know wish i could have because he he's got a great brain and he could get it done that would have been that would have been an outstanding match too i think you guys would have complimented each other pretty well because it's yeah kind of it's kind of similar styles but not exactly so um yeah he has a little bit more flying flying in there which, yeah, uh, yeah, you can say that, but you, you know, you could. You, what I what I love about your style is I love when it just doesn't stop. Like when they talk about the endless gas tank with you when you're yeah. you know, running across the ring and forearming a guy and just not stopping. So that's that's the kind of wrestling I like. But uh, 
How much have you been involved with training wrestlers in your career, and uh, what is or what would your approach be? Uh, well, I guess I have technically one real student ever, and it would be Eric Stevens. Oh, okay. Wrestled. Yeah, I trained him. And then I've, you know, I've helped some people, but, you know, there's a crew of people that I, I currently help, and that is something that I did a lot during my time off when I couldn't physically be in the ring, but it's something that I, you know, want a future in because I absolutely love it. I didn't, I didn't think I would, obviously, younger. It's more ego-driven, and then as you get older, there's more confidence with all that, and it's just like, you know, it's about finding the right people that actually want to do, you know, want to make the changes or, you know, really want to learn and are willing to work very hard because that's what I had to do. And even um, I, I know when we had Adam Cole on just prior to uh, the Wembley Stadium show last year, you were somebody he specifically pointed out as somebody who was consistently giving him, you know, feedback that he needed when he was yeah. in Ring of Honor too. So, you know, is that kind of where the relationship with him was born or is it kind of... Uh... Yeah, that's how it started. And then, you know, the fact that we would have conversations and he would actually try the different stuff or whatever. And then like, you know, seeing how honest of a human he is, you know, cause a lot of people are like, yeah, 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 okay. And then they just do whatever they want and they can do that. That's fine. But, you know, I started to realize cause then, you know, the respect built and then we started hanging out. I was like, man, I kind of like him. And like, you know, we got along super well. So then we, you know, started hanging out beyond just that. But yeah, and that, you know, it's it, it's crazy because he's helped me so much. You know, it started with me helping him, but then, you know, it's such a, you know, it's a very mutually, mutual relationship when it comes to, to help. And, you know, when we say stuff to each other, be it work or life, you know, we know we mean it and we're not just saying saying stuff to make the other just feel better in the, in the moment, you know? So to me, that's, what's great about wrestling too, is that it's, you know, yeah, you can learn from somebody who's a veteran, you know, person breaking you in, whatever like that. But at the same time, it's a, it's a nonstop learning process. It's like, oh, uh, well, and, and the thing I actually, I credit my wife for this. I would ask her like all the time, like her thoughts on stuff. And, and it would be like, but I don't know wrestling because she wasn't like watching wrestling all the time. She wasn't a diehard fan. It was something she casually was doing with her friends. But it gave me a different perspective. And that honestly opened my eyes to the fact that like every perspective is valuable. And, you know, my last little year in NXT, I was wrestling a lot of people with very little experience. Right. And, but I would use a lot of the stuff that they were interested in, you know, I would give them the opportunity to learn. And that way I could see things, you know, and get a feel for the, some of the stuff that they, you know, they want to do or their, their, you know, just their understanding of what is actually going on. And then, you know, try to get feedback from them. And then that, that was a PWG where you met, uh, Marina Shavir, right? Yeah, with her Definitely. attending attending the cards and you being on the cards. Yes. Well, she attended one, and then you know we became friends because I was friends friends with Shayna and Jessamine and stuff. And then over time, yeah, eventually. I just got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's interesting looking at your career because it's. Uh, you know, like I said, I go back far enough to remember when you were new in Ring of Honor. I remember when you went to TNA. I remember when you went to NXT. And I remember, obviously, when you go to AEW now. Is it strange for you to be new to an audience at this point in your career, having, you know, having such a, a, a long, uh, you know, body of work? And, like, what do you hope to accomplish when you're in front of a, a new audience that might not be familiar with you? To give them something to latch on to. Like, even if it's one little thing just so they want to see more of me, you know, be it in ring or promo stuff. But I'm always just trying to 
make people rem remember me and want to see more. And the timing, though, actually, you know, going to AEW, being in front of, an, you know, a new audience, like people that know me, but a lot of people that don't know me. And it was a time where I was trying to figure myself out again, like in the wrestling space. So that was very nerve wracking. And that, like, it took some time because I was building my confidence personally, but also trying to build a relationship with the audience and, you know, get them to respect me. And, you know, obviously, if there's self-doubt at times, that makes it harder. So it was just a, a, a very, this time, very challenging and nerve-wracking time, but it felt like... You know, I felt comfortable there very quickly and, you know, that helped me. And just, you know, the fans and just the idea of AEW just gets me excited. So, like, I was welcome to it after, you know, first couple of times. The one thing looking at your career for me that stood out to me is your career is constantly tied to – like the highest notch in ring product I could think of in that era, whether it's ring of honor in that era, then PWG, when you were you know, obviously a stalwart there, the NXT black and gold was like the biggest era for some, some of those takeovers were unbelievable. You know, what, what stands out to you about each of those stops along the way? I think the common, for me, the common uh, theme is Everybody wants it to succeed and it feels like a passion project and it feels like we're doing it together. And to me, uh, that's what makes all that stuff special. You know, if we were all trying for different things, obviously it wouldn't, you know, the boat wouldn't go upstream if we're all paddling in different directions. It just wouldn't do it. So when you get in a situation like that where it feels like everybody is like, okay, we're going to do this and we understand that we got to, you know, bring the best out of ourselves in this, this, and this. And then like, you know, people being able to help each other and give feedback and, you know, not feel disrespected and people understanding, I don't want to say their place, but yeah, their place. You know, when I got into ring of honor, it was just such a special locker room. It like really set the bar so high for me. I mean, you had guys, you know, you had Joe, Brian, Punk, um, Christopher Daniels, AJ, like guys that were super helpful for all the young talent. And we all looked up to them and it's like, okay, these guys are the stand. Like they were setting the standards so high but not in the same way the undercard people were doing it. Cause there was a lot of craziness in ring of honor back in the day. Some very, you know, just a lot of very special athletes, like doing just some wild stuff and doing it well. But like, there were so many, like you knew if you were in a main event of ring of honor, you had to, you had to be on your A game and yeah. you had to be able to do everything. And I don't know that, that that's always been kind of the theme on these places like all right we're gonna i get in on the time because i really love doing this all together the the aspect of us being a team and doing it together and knowing our roles because when i got into wrestling you you know in 95 just hearing these people talk for the years that i did it's like you're there to do your job you know and i know a lot of it's turned into like self-serving from people but I would just do what my boss asked of me, no matter how difficult the challenge, you know, or how risky it was. But it was it was exciting that they even thought of me for that opportunity. So yeah, those are all the similar things for me. All right, thank you uh, for that. And uh, we're going to move on to something we call the three count. Now it's going to be three quick questions and your answers. Ooh. So first question, I should probably know this, but who named you the Messiah of the Backbreaker? Uh. Ron Nemi from I Florida, right? Yeah, yeah. 
he was calling me the he started he said the master of the backbreaker at first and then through conversation with eric stevens said the messiah so yeah was there any reason it became the messiah of the backbreaker or just it sounded better uh yeah i just liked it better i don't know because to me it would it would be one sp- like in my head master it would be one specific backbreaker that was my thing so okay. messiah is just all encompassing like you're pulling him out of every possible like, exactly. position, like ddp and the diamond cutter so <laughs> exactly so that that's why interesting uh second question has your mustache caught up to bobby fish's uh yet yeah <laughs> uh, yeah he I actually just had a trimming disaster, so I'm, I'm trying to get it back to where it was. That that has been the that that's the negative about a mustache is that once it gets big, it's just all in the way all the yep. time. It's crazy. I just in my mouth. I'm like, what is in my mouth? Oh, I'm like, oh, that's just my facial hair. And did you specifically grow that for all the silliness of the skits, or was there was there any uh, any particular no, I, reason? Uh, I did it to mess with my wife and my son because I wanted to see if he noticed. <laughs> and I thought she would be like, oh, God, get that off of your face. But he didn't know. Well, he did notice. He didn't say anything for like two days now. So, but Marina was like, I love it. You got to keep it. It looks great. And I was like, oh, dang. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to. I put a picture out of myself and I just wanted to see what people thought. And then then once they were like, this is ridiculous. I was like, okay, I'm not like embarrassed to, to keep it because I can just laugh at myself. I'm like, and I call it my uncle Kevin phase because I love my uncle Kevin to death. And when I was a kid, he had a mustache and he was mean. He was very mean. So that's what I, I call this phase. Very, very good. (laughs) Um, And then the last question you know, you you mentioned you've been wrestling since 1995. Who is the most surprising person you think for fans to learn that you either teamed with or faced in your career? Oh, geez. Hmm. Like, how would that person have possibly been in the ring with Roderick Strong? I wrestled against Hacksaw Jim Duggan. When was that? Was oh, my gosh. Maybe 2015. Oh, okay. That's not even that long ago. Year. Over in the UK, I think wow. so, yeah. And it was a yeah, it was a six man. We were on opposite teams. So I got to like wrestle with him. And that was wild. It was funny. He swung his two by four and hit me so hard on the hand. It was crazy. Like I was holding the rope. I would I just didn't get out of there fast enough. And he swung it like he was awesome though. But I'm that was it, like the yeah. No, but that's the most, like, me even thinking about it, that's the most surprising. I was thinking there might be somebody in those early years where it's like, I can't believe that person was in there with him. But uh, I was trying to find those from you yesterday, too, and I couldn't find, like, it, it was a lot of your contemporaries that you were in the ring with in those, in yeah. those early years. So it was it was none that made me go, well, I can't believe that would happen. But, well, yeah, there, was that, a lot of, there was a lot of iron sharp and iron. And that's another thing. Like, a lot of us got to work together so much. Because if you were doing yeah. Ring of Honor, like, and you were, like, in the middle, you were doing majority of the indies that were popular. And then we were all kind of, yeah, so it's and even crazy. The, the veterans that you mentioned when you launched into Ring of Honor are still, every single person you mentioned is still active. <laughs> yeah. Samoa so, Joe, Daniels, AJ, Pug, and uh, Brian. Every yeah. It's, it's, and, it's, it's wild. And, and it's crazy to look back and like realize how young those guys were at that time, right. too. But just how, you know... I don't know. They just were. They got it faster than than most, and it's cool that they were just so willing to give their information at that point. So. Yeah, really, really on the ground floor of a legacy that really uh, kind of shaped the whole future of the business and influenced it in a lot of ways that I'm not sure everybody realizes exactly right now. But you know, I think oh, yeah. uh, I think I think history will remember that era very well for for what it, for what ended up spawning. So. Um, 
But uh, Roderick Strong, thank you so much for joining me today on Under the Ring Wrestling Con- uh, Pro Wrestling Conversations. Revolution against Orange Cassidy, all the best in that match. And Biggest match doing. of my career. Do you Biggest think it is? Match of my- I do, honestly. Yeah. It's the most important one. I will tell you that. Because well, I'm looking forward one, to it. Because- yeah. No, like I said, he just set such a high standard, and this is a r- real challenge, and I call the second phase of my career coming back from everything. And he, you know, he's just going to be the right opponent. And I, and I just can't wait to show the world, you know, what we can do. Can't wait to watch it. And uh, thank you so much for being with me today. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. This. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks.